Hey, this is another video by Pet Rock, and today I'm working on my 03 Dodge Durango 4x4. And today I'm going to be replacing the upper ball joints. As you can see from this angle, the dust boot has actually torn on the back end and is gushing out the grease that should be inside it. These ball joints are actually made by Moog, and I'm going to be replacing them with the same model because they have a lifetime warranty. So after you've clearly jacked up the truck and supported it with jack stands on the frame rails, First you want to remove this bracket right here. This will allow you to get a little bit more access and flexibility in these brake lines and the ABS sensor line. It's a half inch bolt. So now you have a bunch of room and be able to move these cables around as you're trying to work on the ball joint. So I also like to take the bolt and put it back where it came from so it's easier to keep track of. Next you want to remove the cotter pin that's holding the castle nut onto the ball joint. It's a little bit hard to film in this tight space, so I'm going to do this off camera. You just take a pair of dykes or wire cutters, grab onto the cotter pin, and bend it back into shape, or just cut the thing. Okay, once you got the cotter pin out, now you need to loosen, but not entirely remove, the castle nut. The size of this nut is going to be different depending on the manufacturer of the ball joint. I know the stock nut is a different size than the Moog nut, which is on this truck. In my case, it's a 13 16 Okay, now once you've got the nut loosened a little bit so it's showing some threads, but it's not entirely off, you want it on still about two or three threads. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a hammer and hit right here on the knuckle. And what that's going to do is that gonna, it's going to shock the ball joint so that the knuckle will drop through the shaft. Or more specifically, the ball joint will be able to pull out of it. It's also a good idea to take a bungee cord or similar and tuck your lines out of the way so you don't hit it with your hammer. So before you start whacking it with a hammer, you want to jack up the lower control arm slightly to take the weight and pressure off of the ball joint. Because if the suspension is at its full travel, there's going to be a lot of lateral force on that ball joint, making it difficult for it to come out. So to help you out, you want to take a nice pry bar, stick it in here so you can apply upward pressure on the upper control arm as you're hitting on the knuckle. This will help separate it and give it a little bit extra force and make this job a little bit easier. There you go. So now you want to move the nut the rest of the way off. Now you want to take your pry bar again, stick it back in there so you can apply upward pressure on the upper control arm. Then you want to take your other hand and push inward to relieve some of the stress off the ball joint as you push up to re release the ball joint from the knuckle. Like that. Now depending on how rusted these bolts are, you might want to put a little bit of penetrating oil. on them to help loosen them up a little bit and make it easier to remove. On some trucks, these may not be bolts, they may be rivets, at which point you need to get a grinder of some form and grind off the heads of the rivets so that you can pop them out. With this truck, there was a recall for the upper ball joints very early after it was released. They were replaced under recall a long time ago, so I never had to go through the grinding part. So just crack each one of the nuts. So you want to crack them before you remove them all because they can be on here with some amount of torque and or be rusted on there pretty good. So you want to make sure that they're all loose before removing them all to make it so that you can actually remove them all. Because if you get these two nuts off, for example, and don't crack the third one loose first, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to get that third one loose. So now just remove the nuts the rest of the way. And you remove the last bolt, pull the bolt, and pull the ball joint. Okay, now that the ball joint is off, now you want to prep the new ball joint. So now you take your new ball joint, in this case these are made by Moog, and they come with a Zerk fitting, so they're greasable. One common misconception about these Zerk fittings is that these holes right here are not threaded. They're smooth. The threads on this Zerk fitting will actually cut their own threads into this hole right here. So you want to make sure that when you thread this in, you get it in perfectly straight, otherwise it'll leak. In my experience, I prefer to actually install the Zerk fitting first, have it fully threaded and seated, then remove it for the actual install of the ball joint. The reason being is I can make sure that the Zerk fitting is in straight and fully secure and lined up properly easier with the ball joint off the car than I can with it on. Especially if it's a lower ball joint that's upside down or in some weird configuration or, or even tie rod ends, same difference. So take the new Zerk fitting, you insert it into the hole, make sure it's nice and lined up. You give it a nice little twist to start it. Then you turn the whole ball joint to make sure that the Zerk fitting is level. In my case, it is not. So I take it and I start again and just try to get it as level as possible. There you go. So once you got it started like that, you take your 15 16th socket and put it over top and just spin it by hand until it's nice and snug. That means that the threads have actually started. You double check that it's nice and level. 
And then you take your wrench and tighten it down. Till it bottoms out like that. So once it's fully seated, you want to remove the Zerk fitting so you don't damage it when you're installing the ball joint. It's very easy to knock this with a wrench or something like that and uh, break it off. So you also want to inspect the top of the control arm and make sure that this surface is nice and clean. If it's very rusty, you want to take a little bit of emery cloth and smooth it out and remove any of the rust that may on, be on there. You want to make sure that the ball joint is flat against this plate. So then you take your new ball joint, place it on top, take your bolt, put a little bit of anti-seize on it so that next time you have to take this off, it's a little bit easier and less chance of it rusting. Slide the bolt from the bottom up and then put your nut on top. And then do the same for the other three. And now you snug down the bolts. So next you need to torque down these three bolts between 52 and 55 foot-pounds. To account for any inaccuracies in my torque wrench, I like to take half the difference of those two values, which would be about 53 and a half foot-pounds, and torque it to that. So before installing everything, I like to take a little bit of chassis grease, the same grease you're going to be pumping into the ball joint, and lubing up the outer lip on the bottom, and then also lubing up the surface that it'll be sliding on. The reason for that is because rubber doesn't really slide very well, especially when it's rotated, because this boot is gonna get squished up and it's gonna have a reasonable amount of pressure on it, so when it turns, it might actually twist, and you don't want that. You don't want the boot to twist. It'll That'll cause premature failure. So you want it to slide a little bit. So you wanna put a little bit of grease down here, not a whole lot, but a little bit, in order to allow it to rotate a little bit better than if it had no grease. Now you wanna rotate the steering knuckle into place and push the upper control arm down such that there's enough threads on the bottom for you to get the nut through. Then you want to take a little bit of anti-seize and put it on the inside threads of the nut. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And then thread it onto the ball joint. I do it this way because it's a little bit easier to get the anti-seize onto the nut than it is to get it onto the bolt just from the way everything is positioned. Just thread it on. This will make it easier for you to remove the nut later on if you ever have to, especially if you live in an area with a lot of rust. Kind of paying it forward to yourself. Now you just tighten down the nut. The instructions that come with the Moog kit say to torque the nut down to about 60 foot-pounds. I don't know about you, but I can't get a torque wrench and a socket in there. So I'm just going to tighten it down as tight as I can. So once you get it down really tight, you want to line up the castle nut ends with the hole so you can stick the cotter pin through. If you notice right now I have one of the tips of the castle nut is actually covering the hole. So I need to rotate it a little bit more in order to make room. Now you never want to loosen the nut in order to line up the hole. You always want to tighten. It should only take about an eighth of a turn and that's how you want it lined up. Again, you never loosen to achieve this. You always tighten. Now you stick your cotter pin in, take a pair of wire cutters or pliers or something and bend the cotter pin heads down and around the nut. Kind of like that, so it won't fall out. Now you take your Zerk fitting, you stick it back on, and thread it into place. It should thread in pretty easily right now because you cut the threads previously. So now just tighten it down till it bottoms out and snugs up. Now lastly, you apply grease to the Zerk fitting and keep an eye on the boot and watch it expand. That should be about enough. Now some excess may come out the sides and the back or wherever. Don't worry about that, that's normal. So you want to remove the bungee or whatever rope you're using to hold the cables down. You want to remove the bolt, then start the bolt back in by hand as to not cross thread it. And then just tighten it down. Just snug it down. And that's pretty much it. Just lower the jack, put the tire back on, take it for a test drive. After your test drive, you want to double check the boot, make sure that it hasn't torn, obviously. Make sure that it hasn't twisted. Also, clean off any excess grease that may have spit out of this thing as you were driving around. You don't want that getting on your rotor. It also makes a pretty good mess. So that's pretty much it. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like it, please subscribe.